Hey guys, welcome back to the 20th episode of the Glide Tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at making an animation for the ring we had in the previous episode and also just making sure we load the proper level. Uh, right now we do not have different levels, we have a single one that works, um, you know, if you click on any of the button in the level selection, it's all going to the same place and we're going to be fixing that today. So we're going to be starting with that actually, we're going to be starting by uh, fixing this problem we have where we always go to the same level and it's going to be a really really simple fix. So basically all we need to do is right click on scene, create a new folder in here and let's call it, let's call it level. And inside of level there is going to be other scenes since we're already in the scene folder. Now check this out, we're going to be creating a new scene by hitting control and N on the keyboard, then we're saving it save it as zero. That's the first name of our very first level. Since we're a zero base, we're going to go with a level called zero. Inside of here, we might actually want to drop a, um, any other skybox. You can actually put a night one if you want. Um, let's go with a sunny one since why not? But of course, that's going to be the skybox of your level. Now, the way this is going to go is that for every single level you want to create, so that's where you put your content, you're going to get rid of both the main camera and the directional light. So what's up in the scene right now? There is nothing in the scene and that's what we want actually. In that scene, we only want to be putting our objective object. So I'm going to head back inside of the game scene just for a second, grab this level one here. Um, we're going to copy it. Actually, let's do a cut because we don't need it here. So uh, let's do a cut, control X. Okay, cut doesn't work. All right, we're going to copy it. Then put it inside of this one, so paste. Uh, also, this is level 0, so let's call it level 0, why not? Then quickly go back to the game scene, get rid of this one. We don't need him anymore. Uh, at this point, in our scene, we only have level 0. And it looks like this, when you do the editing, when you want to create a new level, you do it inside of here. Okay, you might actually want to put another material on your ring so you can actually see them. Uh, let me go ahead and just put the final ring on every single one of them, then hit apply. This way I can actually see them. Actually, you know what? Let's do the uh, let's do the inactive one. I see them a little bit better like that. But basically, you're going to be making your level in sort of scene zero. Now, when we want to be loading up a level, what we have to do is head over to the game scene, and at the very start right here, we are going to be inputting this thing. So this is what we need right here. We are going to load up the level. Now the level is based off the current level int we have inside of, what is it, it's actually the manager I think. So let's do a scene manager dot load level, actually load scene, and we're going to say manager instance current level to string. Really important, we're going to be loading using the string and not the build index. We could be using the build index, but that would require you to have a proper order in your build index, which I don't. Um, <laughs> So we're going to be building this, we're going to be using the um, the int and convert it into a string. And the other level is going to be called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So that's the name of our level. Now really important that you actually had this right here. It is a second parameter to that function and it decides how we're going to load your scene. If you only load uh, scene 0, you're going to be getting rid of everything else in the game scene which is not something we want. We actually want to keep the stuff inside of the game scene because it's our camera, it's our player, it's our UI, it's everything basically. So we're going to be doing a load scene mode additive. What this is going to do, it's just going to load the scene on top of the game scene. And it's just going to work. So <laughs> let's head into the game and actually try this out. So when we load up the game scene, technically there shouldn't be anything in there uh, before we put that line. Now that we have the load scene additive, it should actually add some rings in there. So let's just hit play here. Oh, and scene zero could not be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings, which is quite true. So every time you make a new level, you have to go under file, build settings, and drag and drop that level right inside of your build settings. Now we can try again and wait for the very long intro, which should have made that like one second head right here and that is going to be our very first level and as you can tell there is rings. Now what happens if I actually go to the second level? It is going to crash because we don't have a second scene yet. Well it's not going to crash but it's going to say that scene 1 has not been added to the build settings which is true because we don't even have a scene 1. Uh, but basically this is actually how we're going to be making levels. 
just for the sake of testing this out just a little bit more, I'm going to hit control, actually, I'm going to copy this, then hit control N, call this one one, put it in my folder, get rid of everything, and then put a objective object in the scene. So the same one we had, let's also rename this for one. And I'm going to just get rid of these rings so we can tell that there is a difference. You could also be changing the skybox, so I could be putting a night skybox in here. Then again, we're going to run the game, head over to the second level this time, and there should be a night skybox and only three rings in this one. And no, because I forgot to add it to the build settings. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting caught in my own mistake here. That's a little bit stupid. Sorry about that. That's uh, I think that's round three. We're trying for the third time now. And let's see. Launching the second level. And it's still daytime. However, we have the only three rings. So I guess that the skybox were, well, actually was not, um, the skybox was not actually overrided we're still using the game Skybox, which actually makes a lot of sense because we're using the camera from the game scene and the game scene has his own Skybox. That's that's the one we put here. And this guy is going to rule every other sky, basically. So that's the first thing we wanted to do, but we also wanted to do something else. So if I head back in any of the scene, I click on one of my ring, I needed to add an animation to this. So what we're gonna be doing right here, just grab one that is um, normal, so say this one. By normal, I mean just in the right rotation. And we're going to go under Window, Animation, and hit Create. So in here, we're going to need two animations, the Idle animation. So Idle Ring. And let's also add another one by clicking here. That's going to be the um, Completed Ring. How do we go about this? Let's just say uh, Completed completed Ring. And we're going to have two animation for this. So I'm not really the best at animating, but we're going to have something that works for sure. We'll be adding a property with the transform and let's actually only play around with the rotation. So we're gonna put the rotation here on zero and then after say, let's say after five seconds is gonna do a full, actually after four seconds is gonna do a full rotation on itself. So right here, those are my keyframe, one at zero, one at four. And for the one at four, I'll be modifying this Y value, no, not the Y one, the Z value and put it on 360. If we press on save here and we play this, it looks something like that. But this is actually not quite cool because it actually doesn't do the curving proper. Oh, actually, it does some curving. As you can tell, it smooths in and smooths out. So we're going to go over to the curves and make sure we right click on this one. Let's do automatic and right click on this one. Let's do automatic as well. And this way you have a nice linear line. So it's going to look like this and there is just no seam. So as you can tell, it just start over and over again. That is the idle animation. So whenever, well, at all time, actually, the ring is going to look like this. What we're gonna be doing now is doing another animation for the completed ring. So what happens when you actually collect it? When you collect it, I'd like to modify the scale of this. So let's do transform scale. Now the normal scale should be, well, that's normal scale right here. It's a hundred everywhere. Let's go over to the dope sheet and had some keyframes. So how long is going to be the animation? Let's do something really, really fast. Uh, let's do one second, actually. Well, this is going to be the size of the ring at the beginning. And once we're done collecting it, we're going to wrap it, we're going to shrink it uh, to one or zero, actually. So zero on all the axis. After a single second, so our animation just looks like that. And just to make it a little bit more spicy, we could actually make it bigger and then smaller. So right about here, I had another keyframe. Um, I'll put that on say 120, why not? 120 on all the axis. And it's gonna look something like this. So it's gonna go big and then go small. And I just realized that I added a keyframe by mistake. Let's delete all of these, okay. So it goes big and then goes small. Something simple like that. We could actually be playing with the curves if you want, just to give it a proper, it just looks proper, right? Um, we're gonna be saving this and we are going to be closing the animation tab. We don't need it anymore. Now in our folder, somewhere in our folder, there's gonna be two new animations just laying somewhere and here they are at the end. I'm going to be dragging this in the artwork folder in another folder called animations, why not? Let's put all of these guys inside of the animation folder. 
Now, the completed ring, we don't want this to loop. We only want this to be playing once, so we'll turn off the loop time on it. The idle ring is fine. We can just leave it like that. And the ring is the animator itself. Now, uh, we're going to have to play with the animator itself. So for this animator, let's actually double click on it. It's going to open up in the, uh, the animator window. And here is the flow we're going to be going through. So when we enter the game, it's going to go through entry and then run the idle ring, which is a loop. So <laughs> as long as we don't do anything, this is going to loop and loop and loop. Now let's right click and make a transition from idle ring to completed ring. However, to enter a completed ring, we have a condition right here. And that condition is going to be, did we collect the ring or not, basically. So we have to add a new condition, but we don't have any trigger right now. So let's head over here on the very left side, click on the plus sign. And that's a layer, actually. We don't want to be adding that. Uh, let's go under parameters first. And then click on the plus sign. It is going to be a trigger. Let's call it a collection trigger. Make sure you remember this name. It's going to be really important. So remember this name, then go back on the transition, which is only the arrow. So you click on the arrow right here. Then under condition, this is going to be collection trigger. And that's really all we need in here, I believe. I think we have to remove the has exit time. And uh, yeah, we actually have to remove that. So let's remove the has exit time. So we've got pretty much everything we need. Now, uh, whenever we do collect this ring, we need to call this trigger, which is collection trigger. Let's go ahead and take this name right here, copy it, go inside of our ring script, which should be right about here. Uh, and where is when we play effects? Is it in the ring script or is it in the objective one? Okay, so it turns out it's inside of the objective.cs. So we're gonna head over to this line and we're going to say rings, add the index uh, rings pass. So ring pass dot get component. We're getting the animator component. So animator set boolean or actually set trigger. Can we just call it trigger? Set trigger and we are going to call this collection trigger. All right, so let's give this a try inside of the game. I'll head over to the um, the preloader scene. Again, launch this the same exact way we launch every time. And head over to say uh, the level number one because it has more ring. Then head over to the scene view and let's have a look what happens. Oh, there is no animator attached to the ring. That is actually quite accurate. So let's head back. Uh, on our prefab, actually, let's only open the prefab section. Um, take the ring out of the trail folder for some reason. And let's just drag and drop this thing somewhere. Then I'm going to add a animator to it and drag and drop the ring right inside of the controller right here. Hit apply and let's see what happens at this point. So remove the ring from the preloader. We don't need it here. And let's see now if we get the proper animation. So let's play this go inside of the scene view and have a look. It is being called, so it looks pretty good actually. You could be playing with the animation as much as you want, but that is going to be pretty much it um, for my end. And as you can tell, the rings also disappear, so we don't see them anymore. They still exist. As you can tell, I can still select them, but the scale is 0, 0, 0, and the trigger don't do anything anymore. So you could be deleting them after, say, a second if you wanted. But that's not going to be required in case you do want to do that. However, just for saving memory purpose, uh, here, when we do a untrigger enter and we do the next ring, you could say destroy this object, so game object, after, say, let's be safe and say five seconds for some reason. That is something you could do. I'll just leave it in there because. I have it in here now. Um, so that's pretty much all we're going to be doing today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoy. Also, subscribe to the channel. Check out the Patreon page. Check out the Facebook page. We are pretty much everywhere. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself. I'd like to have some help, but I can't. Oh, by the way, um, click on the video on the screen right now to head over to the next one where we're going to be doing more levels. We're also going to be doing a small explosion effect and uh, make sure the player can actually die if he collides with whatever else is going to be in the building. So click on the video right now and I'll see you there.